Yes, you are. No. You're going to be on YouTube. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to <laughs> give you a little walk around, but I got accosted by some lady. She was very nice though. But hello and welcome to another First Ride video. I'm out today on the 2021 Suzuki V-Strom 1050 XT. So this is the top of the line XT. Woo! Um, yeah, so this is going to be a first ride. We're going to go over the, some of the specs. It's not going to be an in-depth uh, review because this is the first time I'm actually riding the bike in anger. But before we get going, I actually want to talk about the jacket I'm wearing because I've got so many comments asking what jacket I'm wearing. Now, if you look in the description, I do give you details of all the stuff I'm wearing. Now, full disclosure, Merlin Bike Gear reached out to me to ask if I wanted to do a review on one of their jackets. And how I like to work is that you only see, you guys will only see stuff that I actually like wearing or using. This is the Chigwell Utility Jacket, as you can see, sported by my fine self. <laughs> and it's a wax cotton jacket but because it's made of some special material called Kotec which is kind of trademarked or created by a company called Halley Stevenson's but they work exclusively with Merlin so you won't see Kotec anywhere else and it's essentially a much tougher lighter and breathable waxed cotton jacket uh, this jacket also has a double A rating because it's Kotec so this jacket has a breathable outer exterior it's really really nice on hot sunny days um, you can also take out the inner thermal lining which also has an, a, a detachable waterproof membrane so it kind of got all your bases covered there you've also got d3o armor protection in the shoulders the elbows and also in the back uh, so a massive d3o protector at the back i'll put a link in the description for the jacket and the company merlin and once again thank you merlin for reaching out to me but, right, let's talk about this 2021 Suzuki V-Strom 1050 XT. So we have a 1037cc 90 degree V-twin engine and that makes 105 horsepower at 8,500 RPM and 100 Newton meters of torque and it makes that at 6,000 RPM. So no surprise, it's pretty torquey, it being a V-twin. <laughs> uh, suspension up front we've got Kayaba forks those are fully adjustable and those are upside down forks at the rear we have a monoshock which is preload adjustable via the remote preload adjuster we have Tokiko radial mounted mono blocks up front taking care of the braking and those are on 310 millimeter discs and we have a single piston caliper at the rear about the chassis it weighs i believe it's 247 kilograms fully fueled and ready to ride it has a 20 litre fuel tank suzuki claim 57 miles per gallon so you can expect a couple of hundred miles out of a tank on this machine we have a seat height of 850 or 870 <laughs> uh, millimeters and that was a quick test of the brakes because i was about to overshoot my turning there was nothing behind me, don't worry. Yeah, the seat is adjustable, 850 or 870 millimetres high. And you adjust it by undoing a couple of Allen bolts underneath the seat. And you've got the correct size Allen keys in the toolbox. It's literally a two minute job, if that. We've got an adjustable screen. It has 11 different positions. Adjustable by this little sort of flap at the front. I'll show you when we do a walk around. Um, but it's at the front, so you can't really reach it while you're riding. I mean, you could, but I wouldn't recommend it. Let's talk about ergonomics then. So I find the seat pretty hard from the get-go. I'm just going to say that now. Not all that comfortable. I will take this on a longer journey at some point and see how it fares. But yes, it's fairly narrow though, which even though it's tall at 850 millimeters for me, Remember, I only have a 29 inch inseam and I'm 5 foot 7. I can just about reach the floor, sort of tiptoe. So it's not the best in terms of confidence for me. Ooh. Tractor. Brakes work. Crikey. Yeah, you see uh, little off camber bits like this. It can be a bit, a bit tricky. But uh, it is a very upright commanding seating position. 
and uh, the seating position is actually really nice bolt upright there's a fair bend in my knee but a longer journey would see how comfortable that is it's similar to my tiger actually so i imagine my knees would be okay what else can we talk about electronics wise we've got so many goodies because this is the xt so it comes with the full electronic suite whereas the standard v-strom doesn't have the uh, imu or anything like that so this has lean sensitive abs traction control it has riding modes it has switchable abs and traction control we have hill hold control we have cruise control all the controls it has one touch start we have led indicators we have these hand guards Uh, this one comes with a centre stand, spoked wheels, uh, it has a 12 volt socket under the seat as well as a USB sort of socket up front there to the left of the dash. Now that I've mentioned the dash, this, the, this is a LCD dash, no TFTs here. I mean it's basic but it sort of does the job. I do quite like the economy bar which is a little bar just sort of to the bottom right there which shows you how economical you are riding. Tell you what though, this bike handles really bloody well. <laughs> I actually came out of the seat then. <laughs> uh. One thing I will say, the suspension on this thing is rather firm, out of the box. I haven't touched any of the settings. Um, and yeah, it is a lot firmer than I would have thought. I'm kind of used used to the softer suspension on my uh, Tiger, which is a bit soft up front. <clears throat> it's a busy old day today, everyone around, everyone out and about. So um, the engine, you know, it's, it's got a good linear power delivery. It's not going to light your pants on fire, but it is kind of quite a nice power delivery. You've got three riding modes. You've got uh, A, B and C, A being the most sporty, C being kind of like rain mode. I'm in B at the moment because in A I find the throttle quite snatchy. You've got uh, traction control, two different modes, one or two, one being the sportiest mode. And you can turn off traction control if you want. I mean this does have spoked wheels, big spoked wheels, so it does show its off-road capabilities. If you are into such things, I'm not really into off-roading. Um, <clears throat> but I'll need to address that at some point. But not today. Uh, yeah, suspension, as I said, quite firm. But on the twisty stuff, it is very, very capable. And I actually quite like how the suspension feels. It's very solid. And it doesn't really dive too much, which is nice. And. Uh, quite surprising for a big adventure bike. <laughs> Nearly hit that pigeon up the arse. Bit of anal. Hell of a lot of gravel in the middle of the road, but it's okay, we're on an adventure bike, right? That's how it works. Brakes. Um, the Tokiko monoblocks are pretty good. They have plenty of power, but they just lack a bit of feel. So if you grab a handful, it's just kind of, there's not really much feel as to what the front is actually doing. Rear brake, yeah, it kind of slows you down a bit, but there's not too much bite at this speed, but when you're going lower speeds, it uh, just helps kind of control. Oops, twatted my camera. We're on the gravelly bits. All right, we're gonna get off here and just do a quick walk around. Oh, it's all a bit chaotic today. All a bit chaotic. Right, up to the gates of my house, I wish. Hopefully this won't tip backwards. Right, yes. So, oh, you can actually see the bike now. Right, yes, so, Suzuki V-Strom 1050 XT. So, because it's the XT, you get stuff like your hand guards, you get these engine guards, this little aluminium plate here. You get a centre stand, spoked wheels, LED indicators, 12 volt socket under this seat and you also have a USB socket just here which is really handy for charging stuff up front if you need to 
looks wise I actually quite like these I don't like it in this color particularly but the white and red one I think looks nice because it reminds me of, like the Marlborough racing cars big old front wheel I think this is a 21 inch I believe uh, Bridgestone Battleaxe Adventure tires these are really good on the road actually a 19 inch wheel actually sorry not 21 I just saw there an R19 um, sort of Katana inspired front light it's a bit dusty here's the screen adjustability which you do it would have been nice if they'd figured out a way to do that towards the rider not at the front there a bit more useful I think massive exhaust can typical v-twin noise you know it's a euro 5 engine so it's very very quiet but you can get aftermarket options to liven the sound up Tokiko radial brakes there but rubber hoses would have been nice to see some braided hoses this is the premium edition XC after all you can get a touring pack about 1300 quid gets you full luggage you've got a little uh, luggage grid as standard though so here's the LCD dash it's not particularly bright but you can change the brightness um, there's your ride mode it's called SDMS which is Suzuki drive management system I believe and that controls your ride modes ABS traction control and as I said it's got a six axis IMU so it's all lean sensitive everything cruise control as well which I've already said one touch start <coughs> which actually I can show you so if we just kill the engine you press it once it cranks over until it starts it's 11699 in terms of monies that's in the UK obviously these bikes are different amounts of money in different countries so you would have to look at your local Suzuki dealers to figure out how much it is in your country standing up on the pegs I am lent over quite a bit but if I kind of lean up against the tank it's actually quite comfortable not sure how sort of balanced I would be horse poo everywhere lovely big old turd as I said riding modes you've got three main riding modes A, B and C C is like rain mode B is like kind of everyday mode and A is sport I didn't like A mode I found it really snatchy and uh, B is much nicer so you've got a ride by wire throttle which means I think there's probably a quick shifter option and it hasn't got it on this bike which is a shame because I love quick shifters I am sure off-road this bike would be absolutely brilliant but I will not be taking it off-road today maybe in another video though but uh, overall I'm really impressed with this bike because <clears throat> I'll be honest I, I didn't really it completely flew under my radar but that I find that true of most Suzuki's at the moment there's nothing really from a design point of view that really grabs my attention but it's like the SV650 when you ride it actually you, you figure out this is quite a solid bike um, 11699 so you're getting creeping towards 12 grand but it does have a hell of a lot in terms of electronics and the performance is pretty good um, there is a standard V-Strom 1050 without spoke wheels without the lean sensitive bits and that's £10,000 or £9,999 um, I would be interested to see what that's like actually as I said that doesn't have the uh, full electronic suite but I think it has everything else like the adjustable suspension etc but uh, <clears throat> I haven't really looked into that one too much because I'm riding this as I said the uh, suspension fairly firm surprisingly so but that's on bumpy roads like these um, I imagine it also has a nice amount of travel I can't quite remember what the travel is but it's got 160, I believe it's 160 millimetres of ground clearance. Plenty of ground clearance for your rockier bits and bobs. We have a canoe, ladies and gentlemen. And a very old MG. Classic MG. The MGB GT. see if I can get past this guy yes I can so overall then what do I think of the V-Strom 1050 XC I quite like it 
it's another one of those Suzuki's that I didn't think I'd like but actually it turns out to be a pretty good bike as I said the handling is the biggest surprise for me the engine I kind of knew what the engine would feel like but handling wise I'm very very impressed as to how lively the thing handles sort of turns direction really nicely over on the side of the tyre it's very confidence inspiring the engine is not going to set your pants on fire but it's a good solid engine and another thing to mention with Suzuki's is you get a three year warranty so Suzuki do believe in their product there's six colour options and the DNA for this bike actually was uh, so Suzuki were actually inspired by their DRZ prototype desert bike for the design of this bike or the look which I think is pretty cool going back to their heritage there yeah, and I, I don't mind the looks of this actually. I, it kind of reminds me of something you'd see in a video game, like a Metal Gear Solid motorcycle. Kind of very utilitarian. And we have a big old truck in front of us. Slow speed handling, in B mode at least, is very, very nice. Nice and smooth on the throttle. I'll see if I can show you A mode in a bit. Actually, when you get the engine singing, it does sound pretty good. It's got a nice kind of roar from that airbox. Pull over briefly here and I'll put it into sport mode. Um, to do that, we press mode. Let's go to A mode. So we've got sportiest traction control and ABS and the sportiest riding mode now. Yeah, I find that really snatchy in A mode. But it does deliver the power a bit more aggressively. <laughs> So, things I don't like. The uh, foot pegs, the position of them, they are right in the way when I put my foot down to come to a stop, which, because I'm not the tallest of people, kind of is a bit bothersome. And uh, also, because the foot peg has so much kind of big, grippy rubber on it, I, it always keeps catching my foot. So, as I'm trying to put my foot down, my foot sort of stops on the foot peg, which is a bit. Uh, disconcerting at times. Also the centre stand, when it's fully up, you try and sort of, there's like a plate which you get your foot on. It's right next to the pillion foot pegs. So it can kind of be a bit tricky sometimes to get the centre stand down because I keep catching the uh, pillion foot peg as well. Uh, screen, Ooh, pheasant, very pheasant. The screen, I wish they'd had an adjuster this side towards the rider so you could do it on the fly. Uh, throttle is a bit snatchy in A mode. So those are the things that kind of bother me a bit about this bike but there is plenty to love about this bike. The power delivery, the engine is very linear, very predictable. Plenty of oomph. Uh, suspension is really really good. Oh, a bit stinky around here, I could tell you. <laughs> yeah, that is ever so ever so sensitive on the throttle in A mode. So that's another complaint. Actually, I'm going to pull over and change it. It's, it's that bad. You can change stuff on the fly, but I'm still not quite. And that's the only thing with a taller bike is I nearly I nearly stacked it then. <laughs> right, let's go to B mode. Right, nothing coming. Much better, even that initial. You can tell instantly that uh, you're in a different throttle mode, which is good. And in C mode, in rain mode, it's even softer. So yeah, on roads like this, the suspension is a little bit on the hard side. <laughs> but it's actually uh, damping most of the nasty bits out, which is cool. But as I said, it does handled itself very well on the twisties. As I've mentioned, three year warranty. It's £11,699. I think that'll just about do it guys. So, 
thank you so much for watching don't forget i'm over on patreon if you wish to support my channel it all really helps out patreon.com forward slash english biker dan if you're not already subscribed i would love to have you along i've got lots more videos planned lots of exciting stuff to see hopefully you will join me for the journey that's all for me if you do go out today do ride safely but remember to have fun of course and until next time you ride safely peace